Do you? Yeah. Are you gonna be doing it? Well I'm I'm uh I'm out here a lot. My name's Tony. Nice to meet you. And you are? Sylvia. Sylvia? So um, I'm a member of uh, Grace Fellowship Church here in Davenport. Yeah. And uh, you know where the Walmart is off of uh, Kimberly? Mm -hmm. uh, we're just maybe a half mile past that. Okay. And uh, I, I serve my church full time as an evangelist. I'm out on the streets. Yeah. Um, I come here from time to time, not too often, but I'm often down on Harrison and Locust or other busy intersections. And yeah, that's really just awesome. as, yeah. Do you have any particular spiritual beliefs, Sylvia? Um, I, Sophia, sorry. Sophia, yeah. I'm sorry, forgive um, me. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah? I went to the Assumption for four years. Okay. Yeah, and then now I'm going up to Iowa City, and my priest from Assumption is also going up there, so that's really uh -huh. nice. So let me ask you this, Sophia, since we've known each other for two minutes. Mm -hmm. If you were to die today, obviously I don't want that. Let me block this. I don't know if I could block the sun for you or not. It's okay. If you were to die today and you found yourself standing before God and God asked, Sophia, why should I allow you into heaven? What would you say? My father, Andrew, the teacher at our school, he actually yeah. asked this question. Oh, really? Like, as your final. As your final? Yeah. And how, how'd you answer? I think I said something like, because he loves me and that I'm his child. Okay. Yeah. So do you think you have to be a good person? to go to heaven. No one's perfect. But do you think you have to be a good person? I think you have to at least try. At least try. Yeah. So how hard do you think you have to try before it's before you can have assurance and hope that I've tried hard enough? That God will say, Sophia, you tried hard enough. Come on into heaven. It's really hard. Yeah, but could you ever know how hard that is? That like, okay, this level God will accept. This level this level God won't accept. Can you ever know for sure if you're focused on trying hard? No, I don't think so. What's that? I don't think so. I'm sorry? I don't think so. You don't think so? No, no, and, and I agree. And the problem with that is, is that there's no, there's no hope in that. And we can never really have hope that our sins are going to be forgiven, that we've done enough. And, and add to that, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect now i'm 60 I i've never lived a perfect day in my life have you no no and i think if everyone is honest they'll say well hey nobody's perfect but yet that's god's standard of goodness if we're going to try to get into heaven by trying hard by being good by doing good things then all we have to do is live a perfect life and thought word and deed from cradle to grave but none of us can do that. So then where's the hope? Are you asking me? Yeah, so where's the hope? I think you just got a hope. Well, but hope, just like faith, is only as reliable as the object of our hope and our faith. So if my hope is in all that, that Tony can do, and that's what I'm hoping for, well then the object of my hope is me. Mm -hmm. And I've already failed. If my faith, if the object of my faith is, is the good things that I try to do, and I've never lived a perfect day according to God's standard, then my faith can really bring me no hope or assurance that God's going to accept me. I want to give you hope. That's why I'm out here. I actually, I want to give people hope. Not that it's mine to give, right? I mean, nobody goes to heaven because they talk to Tony, right? I can't, um, the Bible says that there's only one lawgiver and judge, there's only one who's able to save and destroy, and I assure you that verse does not say his name is Tony, it's God, it's God, but we can actually have hope, we can actually have assurance that when we stand before God, that he will allow us into heaven, and it has nothing to do with us. Most religions, and, and I was raised Catholic myself, most religions teach that at least part, if not a lot, of what has to happen to go to heaven is with us. The Bible actually doesn't teach that. I'm guessing you've never been in a courtroom before. No, never. I believe you. Let's say, though, I'm going to paint a picture. Do you have the time? No, I actually have to go. Oh, do you have a couple minutes? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. 
So instead of being this, this lovely, kind young lady named Sophia, who just stopped to talk and encouraged me, you decided you're going to go rob the Costco. I don't think you'd ever do that. And you're not good at it, and you get caught. And you're arrested, you feel guilty, you feel remorse, maybe even you call your priest and say, I can't believe I did this. You're remorseful for it. You decide to write out your confession mm -hmm. for the police. No one, no one made you any false promises. No one threatened you in any way. You were just feeling guilty and you wrote out your confession. Well, one of the things I know about confession is, is that it never shows a person's innocence. It only shows their guilt, right? All right, so even though you've confessed to the crime, you're still entitled to your day in court. And so you have a trial before a judge. The prosecutor holds up Sophia's confession and case closed, right? The judge finds you guilty. Now it's the day of sentencing. And the judge asks, Sophia, what do you have to say for yourself? And you say, well, Your Honor, I've already admitted to my guilt. I'm really sorry for what I've done, but I try to be a good person. And, and, and I, even though I've done this horrible thing, I still think I'm a, basically a good person and I'm trying really hard to do the right thing. So I think you ought to just let me go. Is the judge going to let you go? No. No. If he's a good judge, he has to follow the law, mm -hmm. right? He has to actually sentence you. Now, Sophia, all of us, before God, we have a long criminal history, right? We've sinned against God every day. If not with our actions, maybe with our mouth, the things we say, or even just how we think can be contrary to the law that God's written on our heart. Don't lie, don't steal. You know the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Don't lie, don't steal. Honor your mother and father. But we've broken those commandments every day of our life, even on our best days, right? So we all have this long criminal record against, you know, before God. All right, so back to the courtroom. So the judge says, Sophia, I, I can't just let you go. And then, like a roll of paper towel, he unrolls your criminal history. And he says, Sophia, not only can I not let you go, but because of your life of crime and because of what you did at Costco, not only do I find you guilty, but I sentence you to death. And they're going to take you into the next room. And they're going to put a needle into your arm and put you to sleep like a stray dog. But before that happens, the judge who rightly found you guilty by your own admission, the judge who alone had the authority to impose that sentence, steps down from behind his bench. He takes off those black robes of authority. He walks over to you and he says, Sophia, you are guilty, again, by your own admission. And the right punishment for your life of crime is the death sentence, but I'm going to take your place. And the judge goes into the next room, allows himself to be strapped to a table with Sophia's name on it, allows a needle to be driven into his arm with Sophia's name on it, and he dies the death that you're supposed to die. Not because you're good and not because you try hard, but because the judge decided to pay the penalty that he imposed upon you so that you could be set free. What would you think of the judge? <laughs> that's what would, a lot. Yeah. yeah. He was just, I don't know, that's a really good thing to do. But So was there anything you did that earned that? No. Did the judge owe that to you? No. Because of anything you did? No. And Sophia, that's a picture of what God actually did. God the Father sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, without sin. He lived a perfect life for some 33 years that neither one of us can live for 33 seconds. Yet even though he knows no sin, knew no sin at all, he was perfect God in the flesh. In fact, God the Father gave all judgment to God the Son. He voluntarily suffered and died a death he did not deserve on that Roman cross to take upon himself the punishment people like us rightly deserve for all of our sins against him. And then he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. What God commands of us, Sophia, is not to try harder. It's not to do our best. What he commands of us is to turn from our sin and receive the gift and put our faith and our trust in Jesus alone for our salvation. And Sophia, if God does that work in you, literally causes you to be born again, he'll forgive your sin. He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west. I think they can make it. Yep, they can. He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west and he'll remember it no more. He'll save you, not because you tried hard, not because you earned it or deserved it, but because of the sacrifice of his son on the cross. Now again, I was raised Roman Catholic for the first part of my life. And that's not what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. 
the Roman Catholic Church teaches that yes, Jesus did die on the cross for sinners, but Sophia, there are things that you have to do to work your way into heaven. And you can't. You can't. God's word says you can't. It says, uh, it says that it's by grace we're saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift from God, not as a result of works, so that no man may boast. Have you ever paid for, on your birthday, have you ever paid for a birthday present? No. Has someone ever handed you a gift, you opened it and you said thank you and they said that'll be $200? No. No. If that happened, it would no longer be a gift, right? Right. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Give that some thought? Yeah. Do you have a Bible? Uh, no, I don't. Can I give you one? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping. God bless you. It's so yeah, good to God meet you. you. Yeah. You have a great day. Yeah. Take care.